Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our webinar. Whether you're a new teacher, have been with us for a while, or you're coming back to work with us, we're, we're very happy to have you here. Today, we'll go through the whole adding student situation. Uh, if we get some extra time, we would love to hear a little bit more of your experience. Since we're a platform from educators to educators, it's always great to hear your feedback. Uh, my name is Monica and I'm Brain Buffet Customer Success Manager and I'll be leading you through this webinar alongside Stephen Linkins, that's our web developer that knows everything there is to this platform and Taji Hafing, that's our uh, Director of Operations. So we've come up with this golden team to give you the best coverage for today's content. Uh, thank you for joining us and and we want to make a good experience for everyone. So if you're following up, you can just like do a thumbs up so we know that you're good. If you are seeing something different from your screen, from what's going on in the screen that I'll be sharing, you can always signalize through like making some gestures or through the chat. Since Tachi and Stephen will be attentive to the chat to see what's going on. And since we're not many, you can always like just speak up. We're here to uh, answer all of your questions <laughs> and to be support and to help you alongside everything. Okay, so I'll be asking you to go into your browser now. Uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen. We do um, think our website works best in Google Chrome. So we do recommend that. Um, let me just see here. Okay. Mm. All right. Oh, we had some volunteers. I'm not sure if any of you answer that, but we'll see. <laughs> we get some time to have some volunteers show the process here. So once you have logged into your account, is everyone logged in? Is everyone? I am not. It says something about my email or password is incorrect, and I'm not sure why. I haven't been on this brain buffer for a couple of years, so I don't know. My web, my email address has changed since then, so I don't know if I have to create a new account or, or what. But I'm going to kind of just follow along. You said it would be recorded, and I can figure the rest of it out later. All right then. Yep, okay. and also just to let you know, um, we do. Uh, over time, if it's an account that hasn't been logged into in a really long time, it might not be active anymore. If that's the case, and we're still, um, if you still have an order with us, we'll make sure to get your account set up. So if you continue to have issues, just let us know. And uh, Monica or uh, someone on the support team will respond back when you reach out to support. And I'm sure that Monica will give you more details on that, uh, how to reach out if you need to in the future. Yes, don't worry about that. Thank you. Um, Everyone else, are you following with your account yes not yet okay great elizabeth are you good there i can't really hear but no no hmm? Okay. It's making me reset my password. It didn't like the one I had, so I'm going to reset it real quick. Um, all right, then. Uh, you already have classrooms? You, you already have an account with us for some time? All right, then. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our My Class page. Here under the tab of teachers, we can go in there. The first thing we're going to do is create a classroom. So here on the left side, we have this menu. We're going to click on the option class information. That's where we can create our classrooms. As you can see, I have three created classrooms here. But we're going to create a new one just so you can see. Now, this information here is actually pretty important when creating a classroom. And here you can see the amount of licenses you have been assigned by your license manager. In my case, I have been assigned 80 licenses, so I still have plenty. Uh, and 
and here I can select the package. Depending, different schools uh, acquire more than one package at times. In this case, I have three packages here. The first one's uh, CP Elite. That's uh, an Adobe micro, uh, an Adobe package. So it has all of the Adobe courses. This is an MOS package that has the Microsoft courses. This is an AD package. It's with Autodesk courses. So I want to create a classroom with Adobe courses for my students. Now, this is important because sometimes you want to teach uh, Microsoft courses and you create a, a classroom with the Adobe package. They won't have access to those courses. So you need to make sure you're selecting the correct package here. The classroom name will only be for you and for um, your license manager that will be able to see this. It's going to be... And I'm going to lot here 10 licenses. Now, the licenses a lot here, the number of licenses you will lot here are the total number of the students you will have in that classroom. So you are setting there a restriction to how many licenses you can have in that classroom, how many seats you have in that classroom. So make sure to always put the total number so if you have 10 students, if possible, always try to put a little bit more. In my case, I'm going to put 12 here, even though I only have 10 students that need them. And that's it. I'm going to add the classroom, and I'm going to refresh the browser to see the changes that I've made. All right, so here we have Brain Buffet testing from the Brain Buffet University. So as I told you, here's the name. The name is mostly for you. Students don't have access to that. So it's for you to organize yourself, put the year, put the period, put the uh, semester. It's for you. Here we have the expiration date of the classroom. Depending on the package, they have different expiration dates sometimes. And if your students are not being able to see any of the videos and this date here has already passed, chances are it there was an issue with the renewal, so you should contact your license manager about that. Now, in here we have the number of students that have been enrolled in the classroom. So in this one, I have 15, this one I have 10, and this one's these two, I don't have any because they're new classroom. I'm actually going to delete this one. Um, um, I This is the one we just created, right? So we have not enrolled any student yet. But we can see here the remaining registrations. I set 12 students for this classroom. There are none enrolled, but I still have 12 licenses to be used. Okay. Uh, from here, we can see the courses in the classroom. So for this one, it's Adobe. And I can see here the Adobe classroom, uh, the Adobe courses that the students have access to. Regardless of which one I'm teaching them, they will have access to all of these. And this is what's showing you there. And from here, I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with this, unless you're new. Uh, this is a link to add your, your students to your classrooms. There are three ways you can add your students to your classroom. This is the most common way and the most popular, I'd say, because you will only copy this link and you can put it in the platform that you use to communicate with your students and they will be able to log in. And I'm going to show you now what is it that they will see. So when they click the link, and this is what they will see. They will have the option to put their first name, last name, username, email. They will create their account inside. Uh, we're not visualizing, Monica. Yeah, oh, we don't sorry. see that. E sorry. Right here. Now. Yeah, there. There we go. Yep, we can see it. Thank you. So here they put their first name, last name, username. They will create their account through here. And they, they will be enrolled automatically into your classroom if you have remaining licenses left inside the classroom. So for example, in this one, I have remaining 12 remaining licenses. So I can see the, the link information. Now, for example, this one that has zero remaining licenses. If I click on the link, this is what we're going to see. Let me show the other screen. Yeah, 
this is the message that will appear to them. I don't know if this has happened with you before. So if this message is appearing to your class, uh, to your students, it only means that there are no registrations left in the classroom. How do we change that? You can you just have to click here and manage manage seats. And uh, for example, here I have ten and I need eleven because there's a new student that I was not counting on that just came in. So I'm just gonna add another license. Um, just remember that this is the maximum amount of students you will have in that classroom. So you won't put one because you don't want one more. You want eleven. It's a total number. Let's say changes. Okay, refresh data. All right. And I'm gonna share other screen. Okay, so from here, I'm just gonna reload this link. And voila, I can register as a student inside that classroom. Okay, are we clear here? This first part of how to add students through the link. Um, okay. I'd also like to add myself. Um, we have two more ways to add students that Monica is going to go over. But going to add students using the link is probably your best bet, just because in a lot of cases, schools will block emails that come from outside of the school or that come from an unknown address. And then following two ways to add students are going to require the students to receive an email. And that's where they're going to see their login information. Using the link that Monica just went over, they won't have to receive an email to log in. So that's the easiest and most seamless way for them to join your classroom. Um, the next two ways that Monica shows you are going to be uh, requiring them to receive an email with login information. Exactly. So if they do have the option to receive email from outside sources, then you can use this other option. If not, you should just use the link. Um, so to do so, to add them through their email, you will go here to the student roster on the left side menu. You can just click that. Here you will select your classroom. So we want to add students to the Brain Buffet testing classroom. And I can see here that I have the amount of registrations that I have remaining. So in my case, I have 12. So I can enroll up to 12 students. So I'm going to click here and enroll new user. And I can add them through here. So we're going to add here Eric. And I'm just going to click here. First name, last name, email, add user. And that's it. That's to add them manually one by one. There he is with his student options. It's just that in the case you have more than one student in your class, more three, five, ten, maybe you have 50 or 30, you may want to use other way. And um, we're going to click here and enroll new user. And we have the upload users option where you can upload them using a CSV file. The CSV file, it's it's a sheet file. So it can be like from Google Sheet. It can be like an Excel file. And here you have a sample. So you know uh, a template. You can download it so you can see how you can add those users. So here, this is a template. You will only have the first name, last name, email, very simple. Uh, you will download this template. You can just delete this information and put your student's information if you have it in another sheet. And that would be it. It's very simple. Then from here, you will choose the file, select the file, open, and then click upload. I'm just not going to upload it now. Why? Because I said I, I actually can. You can just upload it there. Um, an error that commonly happens is that when you have, for example, here I, I said 12 registrations and I knew this, um, this file here had 10 students. But in the case that I have 10 students here and there are many registrations and the template has more students than the amount I have set for the classroom, the template won't work, the file won't work, and it won't load any of my students because I'm asking it to add more students than the ones I have set 
for the classroom. So always make sure that you have enough licenses set in the classroom when you're adding your students, okay? So we don't have those sort of issues. Do we have any questions at this point? I'm sorry, am I going too fast? Am I going at a good pace? All right, that's great to know. Then from here, what are our student options? Um, so from here, we can see their names, email, and we can re-invite them. So if they didn't receive the, the email or they lost the access, they don't know where it is, you can just click here and it will send them a new email. Let's see. Okay. Also, so for example, Ellen was added in my classroom, but then midway they decided she had to change uh, the schedule of their classes so she's no longer with me I can just remove them from here okay and she's no longer here I won't be seeing her progress but it also won't be taking up the space I can also reset their password through here we always have that student that writes something in papers and the paper mysteriously uh it's no longer there. So we can just reset their password here. So Hunter lost his password, can just put here. Brain Buffet is the best. And okay, that's his new password. These passwords have to have up to eight characters. Can be more than that, just not less. And that would be it. They can access without an issue and continue on your classroom uh, with your classes. So this would be the three ways that you can add your students to your classroom, okay? First one's manually, add them one by one here. Add them through a CSV file. You can download the sample here. And the third one is through the link, okay? You link them to the classroom and they will create their account. Um, now, let's go through another situation where you have to change all of your students from this classroom to other one, to another one. I don't know if you have had that issue. Um, to do so, all you have to do is export the rooster here. Okay, right there, export it. Then I'm gonna click here, back in class information. And I'm gonna move them, all of them from this classroom into this one. To do so, I need first to make sure there are enough seats. Yes, 10, and I'm adding 10. We're good. I'm going to go back to student roster. And now I'm going to select the Autodesk classroom right here. Okay. I have 10 many registrations. And I'm just going to upload the CSV file. Now, if your student doesn't have the that situation where you can't receive an email from outside sources, it doesn't matter because their account has already been created. So when you do this, they're going to be automatically enrolled into your classroom. Once their account is created, there's no issue for you to add them with the email. It's only an issue when they have to create an account. So if you're going to move them from one classroom to another, all you have to do is export the roster here and enroll it here. All right, so we have just moved all the students from one classroom to another. Okay, are we following? It's all clear and good up to here. Wait. I'm putting some sort of notification here. Um, so that would be it for creating the classrooms and managing the students adding the students and removing them. You can always also change the name of the classroom from here. And in the case that you don't want a classroom anymore, you can just delete it from here. Confirm. And as always, refresh the uh, page so you can see the changes that you have done. You said earlier, if you had a student that was in your class, you enrolled them and then they went someplace else, you said you could remove them, but what happens with the, the seat they took? Do you lose it? Do you, you gain that back? What happens with that? 
just going to ask her. <laughs> well, I was just going to ask her almost the same question. <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, Stephen, could you yeah. answer that question? Thank you. Yep. So right now, when you remove that student, the seat does not come back because um, when Certiport sells it, it's, it's sold as a one-time use license. So when you renew the following school year, if you renew, you'll get those seats back. But once you use it, that seat is used for that year. Does that answer the question? Yes. When my classes change at semesters, I'm going to be okay. But when my classes, when we switch to trimesters the following year, I'm not going to have enough licenses. So I, yeah. Gotcha. You can you can always reach out and like it would be a case by case. Um, so if there is like a transition, a student in the beginning, there was a, we got a, a feedback, like a ticket recently that one student decide quit that classroom and move to another one. And so we can give that back. So it's just mm -hmm. like a case by case and you can always reach out. Uh, usually the decision is on the certi certiport sales team. Okay, but, so like I'm at capacity because my classes they fill, right? But like the second they move a kid out, they're putting a different kid back in my class, and that might happen once, and I it might happen, I might have that happen 10 times, you know what I mean? Like at the beginning of the year when they're moving kids around, I just want to make sure that I'm not gonna suddenly then run out of like the kid right. might only be there for three days, mm -hmm. it, but usually, so, like the the amount of seats that you receive uh, for like, if you see there, you can manage your own classroom and add one more. Um, but then, like I said, it would be a case by case, like if you run out. So I don't know how many classrooms are there uh, in, in your school with Rainbow Fit, do you know? Currently, this we're brand new to this. So oh, okay. we 300. And if I, we just got, we just started. And if I enroll like this semester, I have 186 kids. Wow. But I have of that, there's going to be two classes that are only semester classes. So we'll be okay because I bought 300. Mm -hmm. But when we switch to trimesters, that's going to be, I'm going to have more kids taking my classes. So I'm going to need more seats hmm. for those kids, but they're only in there for 13 weeks. It's not like they're using that license for the whole entire year. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. In that case, I believe that sort of port will ask you to buy like, in, for instance, a 500 user license, but knowing that like schools are going to trimesters, it's something that we're going to talk to sort of port about and, you know, okay. that may not be the forever solution, but right now that is how they work. Um, and so in that instance with a trimester, if you work with your sort of rep, they might be able to, you know, change that for you or work a deal with your school or your district. But really, like Tashi said right now, that's up to the sort of side. But we're glad to hear about these instances, like in your case with the trimesters, because that's not something that we've heard yet. And if that's going to be the case, clearly that's going to cause this kind of issue. And we'll need to work with Certiport to make sure that schools like that are having their you know needs met as well. So thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Okay, so continuing with the second part of our webinar, the first part was creating classrooms and adding students. Now we're going to go to the course progression. We're going to see the progress of those students what kind of tools do we have in the, within the platform? To do so on the left side, we have the menu. We're gonna to go to course progression. And from here, we're gonna select our classroom. So we're doing Braverfin testing. And this classroom is doing Photoshop with me. Though we have somebody here, Alfonso Cantor, that's doing After Effects as well but that's not with me. So we can see the progress that the student has done in other courses as well. So that's why you need to select the specific course you are doing with them. 
So you can see their specific scores. So from here, what are my options? Um, first, we have the progression overview. Are the topics completed up here? So I can see. So this they have only done the Photoshop files. We can change here to see which project specifically they have done or not. So here I can see all of them at once which project they have done. I'm not sure if all of you are familiar. We work with projects within a course. So the course of Photoshop, for example, has eight projects here. And each, each one of these is a video. So we can see if they have seen it, they have finished it, okay. And these videos have questions in between. So we can see if they have sent the answers or not. So we can see that all of them Hey, Monica, uh, an important note that just came to my mind. Sometimes okay. teachers won't see if the student completed. Like, let's say the student say, oh, I'm completing the videos, but you know, you won't see that they are completing. So once they finish watching a video, there are always the questions that they need to submit to show that they were really paying attention to that question. So it's a pop-up questions. So when they do answer that, and then they submit it at the end, that's when you visualize that it's done. Um, because uh, this is a way for us to really process if they're paying attention and following along every video and they're not just you know, passing forward and pretending. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if all of you are familiar with it, but here we have this pop-up questions. And then here at the end, we have this star that they have to send it where they will submit the question that they have just answered or not. So if they are not submitting it, the the video won't be seen as completed. It won't have this check mark here. Now, if I want to see, for example, I'm, I want to talk to Max about uh, his progress and I don't want him to see all the other kids' progress. I can just click here and the eye icon. So I will only be able to see Max progress and I'll be able to talk with him without having to worry about him seeing the other kids' progress. And also if I want to know, go a little bit deeper, understand a little bit more what's going on with Max, I can click the detail user report. And this detail user report is regardless of the course that they're doing. So here I can see which other teachers have him added. I can also see which other classrooms he's a part of on this side. And here I can see the course he has been working on. So he has only been working on Photoshop and I can see he has only watched 50 minutes of the course. I can go down here and I can see each project per project. And through this specific platform, I can also check mark. So if he's telling me like, oh, I'm watching this one, but I can't, like, you know, they have watched it or there was an issue with the connection or something and the video finished and he couldn't, he didn't get the check mark. You can always put the check mark through here. So you can completely um, control what's going on within the classroom and with the specific student. You can also see down here, their course attempts. So here we can see that they have done all of quiz. these. Yes, the, the, quiz. the quiz attempts. Thank you, the course attempts. Here you can see the quiz attempts that they have done, when they have done it, and their score. Okay, and we can just go back then. Something that's also very interesting that you can do from here. So you have all of your students' uh, information here. You can always export all data as a CSV file. And it will look a little bit like this. So for example, we are doing Photoshop and they have opened the project files. All of our courses have project files for them to follow along to do the projects. And um, so here we can see if they have opened them, so they're working on them or not. And here we can see the course progression. So here we can see that Ellen has done 47% of the whole course. Now this 
course progressions from the whole course, not only that specific project. It will involve everything. Alfonso already finished, so he has 100%. And Gabby hasn't done anything. She hasn't even opened the project files yet. She has. And the project completion here is when they have opened it or not. So here we can see all that information with the course as a whole, okay? And we can always just download here, download that information from here. Now, when we're talking about quiz, quizzes, out real quick to Monica for the course progression, it will specifically print out the CSV for the project that you have selected. So in that case, the CSV was for the project files project, the first one. But if you were to say do project one or project two, there would be several columns, one for each topic, like 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. And there will be several X's or the lack of an X if they haven't opened those topics. So the um, project files just has that one column, but if it was a longer ch uh, chapter or a longer module, then there will be several columns and there will be an X in the columns that they've completed. So that's kind of just a way to get a, an actual downloaded visual in case you need to upload that somewhere. Okay. Did, did you all get that? It's because I downloaded the file with the project files. So depending on which one, you will get the information. Just as we see it here, but in a sheet. And we also have this, but specifically for quiz reports. So here we will select the course, the classroom. We will select the course. In this case, I'm going to select a different classroom. Um, visual cards. And we're going to see the Photoshop course. And here we can see their attempts, the number of attempts they have done, the number of questions they have gotten right or wrong. And we can even review the quiz so we can see here which questions they got wrong or right, and which is the right answer. Because sometimes you're teaching uh, Photoshop, but you are not acquainted with the uh, software. You can just click here, you can see the right answer. So which is it that they got wrong? Why did they get it wrong? It's right here, we can see how long did, they, did it took for them to answer this question. We have all of that information here. And, uh, subtotal right here so we can join in um, so students uh just to be clear students can attempt as many times as they would like um and you can visualize how many attempts they they had but in order for them to pass and conclude that module or project they need to uh, get 80 percent right to show that they they have the knowledge needed to go to the next module that so they can attempt a hundred times if they need. Um, it's a way for them to, to learn more or if they're not getting it. And you can have the reports of how many attempts and what they are getting wrong. Um, so you'll be able to see that. Yes, also in here, we have the same options as in course progression. So we can hide other students. We can access their detailed report. And in this option here, we can also download their certificate. As you can see in this course progression, we can see that Alfonso Cantor already finished the course. So you can also download it from here or you can download it from here. Um, this information of his certification will be attached to his user. So regardless of the class or the time, you will find it here always. Um, one thing also I want to point out with these pages, the course progression and the quiz reports, if you click on any of those columns, so the last name, first name, view, submitted on, it will actually sort by that column. So that way you can sort by last name, which is pretty common. You can sort by first name. You can sort by attempt number. Um, you can sort by score. And if you go to the course progression, you can do the same thing, kind of sort by different features of the uh, or different columns of the table there. And just like with the course progression, we can also export the data. We're gonna do here for the project one. And 
we should see here. We can see the number of attempts. It will appear like this. So uh, Gopal has tried two times. And here we can see he, she first got four out of 10, then she got 10 out of 10, 40 to 100. When was it done? And uh, we can see, yeah, that information, the name will repeat itself depending on the amount of attempts they have done. We can see their quiz score here and the total correct um, answers they have gotten. And this here is the certificate that you will get when you click on download there, the certificate. And I believe that would be it for the uh, adding and course progression part. We still have a little bit more minutes and we would like to hear a little bit more of you if you would like to share, you have any doubts still or things that are not showing up on your screen. I have a question. Um, how long does it take to go through something like this? Because this is like a lot of information and you still have other content we have to teach, you know, for our, the state of Ohio. How long does something like this take to go through before the students are able to be able to take their tests and, and still be able to continue to, to teach your content from the state of Ohio? I think Sam is here. Sam? I don't think he's here. So um, that so that depends. We do have the um, the per course, uh, like we have a course list. Perhaps Monica, you can open that while I'm talking. Remember at thirty four folder, um, and so we have the course hour list. And if you email to uh, email us, we can send that over to you. So we have the total video hours, uh, which is something I'm watching a lot. Say it again. And uh, but the total class time will mean how much time it usually takes for a student to go over the project files because it is, as you all know, very important that the students follow along and try to create the project. And that will depend from student to student. It will vary from one student to the other how much time they take uh, to go over those project files. But we have. Uh, an average of how much time it will take. Do you have the document there, Monica, so that we can show even the that presentation that you created has the, the total class time for Photoshop, for example, or InDesign? Yes. And then the, the good thing about having those videos in a classroom is that um, it is very individualized. So you are able to let the student go at their own pace. So if there are students that are a bit slower in the process of learning, uh, in the other hand, you have some students that sometimes go quicker or they have a, a, a it's easier for them to, to process or to go over some videos and project creation, or they already had you know some training before. So uh, you can, with this, go, Desk by desk and attend that student or facilitate while other students are learning at their own pace. So this is a, for example, for Photoshop, eight point five hours are video, but then we estimate a class time of forty seven hours, and that would be to follow every project. Uh, we have worksheets. Sometimes, depending on the course, we also have. Uh, additional materials or questions they can answer on a spreadsheet aside that can be printed, uh, includes the quizzes time that they are taking. So it's a tentative estimate uh, and it varies, like I said. So for animate, 31 hours of total class time. Yes, um, um, we actually want to work through this project files, how you can implement them, how you can use them in your classroom. What is it that you have there? Because sometimes it's too much, too many things, or you only get to see them when you're there with your students. So we want to work through that on June, on June's webinar. Yes, we want to work through the project files, how you can use them to implement your your students' um content, the content that they will get. Because we have worked on a lot of things. So for example, Autodesk, it's very heavy also on software. Right. And so 
um, for example, 5.1 hours of the project, the, the video duration, but then 15 hours of, of working on the, the, the files. Photoshop is our longest one. Yeah, that's a lot of hours because because that's I mean you're just focusing on this this certification test, but you're not teaching all the content from the state of Ohio that needs to be taught. You're just focusing on just a software program. That's kind of a lot of hours. The, if you check the certification, um, the the certifor website, there is mm -hmm. a for them to pass the exam, there is like an amount of hours that they need to have as like for the knowledge the 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 learning. A period of hours that it's needed it's very mm -hmm. heavy for them to yeah. be certified um so um i don't yeah. think they spent this many hours doing the when they go through geometrics and i'm teaching the software myself we don't you know use this many hours we wouldn't get done that's all i would be teaching is this software i wouldn't be teaching screen print layout and design estimation i wouldn't be teaching any of that stuff if i'm going to do all these softwares it just would just be software based they wouldn't I wouldn't be teaching the content from the state of Ohio besides just this. Yeah, I think that too, the hours for the Photoshop are a little skewed in the, the longer side because there are more worksheets and like miscellaneous uh, activities that we have for Photoshop specifically. So those are all extraneous and a lot of it is like enrichment stuff that you don't need to do. Um, if you see like the videos in the uh, um, estimated class time uh, for the other courses more are a little bit more directly correlated, but with Photoshop, there's some more miscellaneous and extraneous like bonus work that they can do. But to follow along with the videos, it's going to be closer to the 20 to 30 hour mark, I think, compared to the other courses. Um, but that's Photoshop specifically. I think the other ones are a little bit more accurate. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. And then what, this is one last question, not to take up all the time, but uh, are they all, all able to do any of this stuff at, as a login at home? I know you said students can work at their own pace, but I when I give assignments in class, I have like a deadline as to when it's due then I, before I go to the next thing. And I know some students take longer. So if they didn't finish, is that something they would be able to do at, at home? Or is it just a school-based thing when they log in? Yeah, all they need is internet access and it will depend from your schools uh, if, if they are allowed. Uh, so all they need is internet access and then the software. So if they're following along and following, since it's a software base, they would need the software. And that's the only thing, but they would be able to watch the videos at home or work on an assignment. But if it's a like a project base and if they're following along with the software, then they would need the software to practice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other comments and, and questions? We would love to... Uh, to learn more about uh, your difficulties, um, things that we can help you with. Um, the comment I wanted to make, I'm sorry, I got to the webinar a little bit late because I was traveling and had some login issues. Um, I've been using Brain Buffet for a couple of years just to kind of help some of you guys. And I can tell you that um, it does take, we're about to finish, and I'm a semester course, um, we're on alternating blocks, so I have them for 90 minutes every other day. Um, we also have a lot of snow where I am too, so we have a lot of snow days, but my students are finishing uh, the Photoshop unit now. We would have finished before, we're on spring break right now, we would have finished um, last week, but we had a couple snow days that we will have to finish when we get back. Um, a lot of my students could have finished weeks ago, but I'm kind of an OCD teacher that wants to keep everybody in the same place. So I'm learning um, that it's okay to kind of let the fast ones move ahead. And then they just do additional projects and they can meet with me. But I literally have some that are so slow and have missed so much and been so sick um, that they are so far behind that it may take them another couple of weeks to finish. And I just filled in projects along the way, or maybe there's a day that I don't do brain buffet. And if you haven't finished, you may miss the session, but the rest of us are going to do So I don't know if that helps you in our pacing. Yeah, that's great insight. And you said you started it was starting at the beginning of January, I'm assuming. We didn't start in, in January. Um, our spring semester is about two weeks longer. Um, okay. And so I really have to kind of keep an eye on the time in the fall. Um, but 
I just have to build a few things in along the way. But it, it's been the same kind of concern that I had too, is it does take quite a bit longer to do that. There's more projects in Photoshop, but they go quicker. Um, the InDesign course seems to, and I know when you look at the hours, it looks like they're about the same, but the, the concepts are a little bit harder for the kids. And it takes them a long time to get through that. It really does. And we're not doing a lot of extra stuff. It's just me teaching a little bit in between. So that's for InDesign. You think that you believe that it takes longer than 23 hours on your feedback? For oh, well, th when they start a new project, my students always look to see how many videos there are. <laughs> and the last one with the portfolio, which I think is so, so important, they looked at that and said, there are over 36 videos because they, they usually add up and get their calculators out and figure out how many they need to do in class period <laughs> in order to get there. <laughs> and they're like, this one is so long. <laughs> I get it yeah well I have a teenager at home and she's constantly complaining about having to study or or do assignments so <laughs> yeah um, yeah sometimes it does feel long because of the amount of videos but we um, make them shorter to maintain their their level of um, participation and so most of our videos should range from three to eight. Some videos go a little higher, but it should be short, you know, short videos for them to just not get too tired and then change the pace a little bit. Yeah, um, for, for context, I mean, Tasha, you're the curriculum uh, expert, but I believe that just for that context, we probably will end up going with like more videos, but shorter time on the videos. So to the students that actually look at the amount of videos, they're probably going to see more. And that's going to continue to happen. But the, I think over time, our goal is to get the videos to be shorter. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong there, Tashi, but that's kind of going to be like a, a relation that's inversing a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, we do have to meet the, the the objective domains, the amount of things that they need to learn about uh, the software to pass the exam. And so that's where we base before when we were creating the curriculum and some, some, some of the certification exams have a lot of, objective domain so things that they need to know before they they test um but yeah the idea is to maintain our videos more fun and engaging and so we're working on new new courses that are coming and uh, we love inputs and insights so feel free to email us the feedback that you've been getting from your students and what we can do better uh, we are doing for the next school uh, school year the updates to uh, ui updates for the, the Adobe courses, and then working next year, um, a full, full, complete redo of the Adobe courses to follow along with the changes with the exam that's coming also next year. So we'll, you'll be able to visualize that. So your feedback's much appreciated about what your students think about our courses, for sure. Um, regarding any other comments or, or regarding the platform and things that we could help you with. Before we finish, Monica, can you show the live bot? Yep. Yes, that's <laughs> oh, that would have been very helpful. So we have it right here. It's available for teachers and license managers. Uh, you can just access the license management dashboard here. If you are the license manager, yeah, you're a yes. license manager. On Your the attention. lower right side, you have the chat box. And here you can just chat with Barry if you have a question. So, for example, I need a new password. And okay. Barry will give me the options here that I have within our frequently asked questions and everything. But if I don't feel that was enough, I can always say, like, when he asks where you will serve, I will tell him no. And he will direct me towards the live chat. So from here onwards, you'll be talking with uh, with me, okay. because with our agent. Real person. Yeah. Yes, with a real person. So this is Doing workout. a new feature that started uh, at the beginning of this month, right? At the end of last mm -hmm. month, we already had installed. So here 
I can talk yeah, with so somebody. The idea is to facilitate teachers' lives as they are in a classroom and they can't look. I, we understand that you you have a lot to go over. You guys are heroes. You have such a short time to uh, get to do so many things. So we want to facilitate a little bit for you. So you, if you're running to any issues, Monica is going to be there for you. And um, at the beginning of school year, it's definitely a lot harder. And then what happened this last year was that we were just before the school started, the person in charge um, transitioned out and it took us some time to to work with the transition. But hopefully, you know, um, that's not going to happen again. And then we will have we now have three people trained um, to help during the new school year. And we'll have the live chat. Um, we also have a shorter uh, response time in the emails. So uh, we're here for you. And feel free to check here. We have lots of articles, um, different sections. If you feel something could be added, we always accept feedback. Like I said, it's a platform from educators to educators. We know education is not something. It's finished. We're learning. But there's always new things to put there. Um, and Barry here, it's uh, an AI. So he will understand your question. I will take you to the frequently asked questions that are related to that question that you just made. But if anything, yeah. you have somebody there on the other end if he's not able to assist you. All right. But usually you have three dots in this in here in the upper right side. You can click on it and select talk to a human and you will be directed straight to the live chat. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's some golden information you're getting out of here with. Thank you <laughs> so much for participating. We're really happy to have this exchange of words, understand a little bit more, teach you all how to use this platform that's been created with lots of love, lots of crunches. We've been working to make things easier for you in the most possible way.